this continuing destruction of capital, yeah. um, if it was carried to the logical conclusion, it leads to the destruction of the currency itself. Um, and the problem I have, and please give me confidence that I'm wrong on this, is that I find it very hard to see that once you embark on that road, how you stop it, how you suddenly decide, right, we're going to stop printing. Because if you do that, um, then you know, debts become r real, um, mm. and uh, so you get bankruptcies. You get, you get the correction in the economy, which may well indeed be needed. Um, and under Austrian theory, it's, it's, it is actually essential that it happens. It's going to happen, and the more you defer it, the worse it is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but notwithstanding that, to take the political decision to bankrupt many businesses that is the way they would see it, by withdrawing um, the extra money from circulation, is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, I think that... How do we get away from it? That's really But, but it question. is going to be even worse if they don't stop it now, <laughs> if they go on with this policy. It just gets worse and worse, Yeah, worse and it? worse with, the, with yeah. the years and with the months. So the thing is that uh, they are indeed destroying the savings in the, in the economy, the capital, uh, following the Austrian perspective of economic cycle. I agree with you that they are taking the wrong way. Uh, they should uh, correct the, the money investments uh, the, the economy made in the last expansion. I totally agree with you. But it, it is so difficult for politicians, uh, for the Treasury and for the President of the United States to tell the Federal, government, the Federal Reserve to stop printing money, to stop supporting the economy. It would be, you know, like losing the, the elections in next year. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other way, uh, sorry, sorry, on the other side, uh, I totally agree with you that at some point, I think that they trust that with uh, pumping money into the economy, they are going to make the economy grow at some point. So then, as, as I told you, they trust that if they achieve this goal, uh, they can, you know, more or less uh, come to a conventional monetary policy once the economy is growing. That's their belief. Well, that's an interesting one because um, I, I, when I look at GDP, which is the way everybody says, you know, that's the measure of the way the economy yeah, goes. That's the conventional way. Um, it's the conventional way, but the more I look at GDP, the more convinced I am that it's actually a money quantity which has no relation at all to the underlying productivity and production in, um, in an economy. And um, uh, so what that suggests is that if they push enough money into the economy in the form of money printing and so on and so forth, then the GDP statistic will recover. So we will get the appearance of economic recovery, while at the mm. same time we know if we look at hard statistics such as uh, unemployment, uh, that um, actually <laughs> we're in a depression. Well, yeah, here uh, I think that there may be um, a relation in the medium term between money growth and uh, nominal income in the economy. I think this is pretty clear according to the statistical evidence. This is the point uh, uh, Friedman made in his last year, well, in, his, in all his career. But I agree that in the short term now, the money that the Fed is printing uh, may have an impact in, nominal, in the nominal income in the US economy but in the, in the inflation side of the, of the nominal income and not in the real side, I agree with you. So they are going to have a problem. As I said before, I don't trust their trust on the mm. effectiveness of this policy. So they should, maybe not now, because for political reasons they are not in the correct phase to do it, but at some point they have to stop printing so much money. Because they are not only supporting the banks, as we talked uh, before, they are doing much more than that. I think they are pursuing a political, an economic political um, uh, goal, which is the one that is, has been set by the federal government. So having destroyed so much in the way of savings, um, the US government after the election has to cut the budget deficit back to Oof. where? I mean, well, I, you know, because it's got to fund it, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's also got to roll over the existing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's against a background of banks who are now in a totally different mode from the uh, banking crisis back in 2007-8. You know, before then, they were prepared to expand their balance sheets. You know, they would, they would um, give away money to get business. Now, of course, they're totally different. They take every opportunity to reduce their exposure because they're overgeared and they understand that. And they don't want to have to go into the Fed's window every 
yeah. <laughs> at every yeah. opportunity. So, um, with the banks trying to contract the balance sheets um, and government spending having to be cut hard, it's quite difficult to see how this is going to going to work in practice. Um, and I, I mean, you made the point that. Um, uh, you know, perhaps if there is a, a pickup in GDP, it's going to be at the price level, I think, rather than actual production level. Um, I would agree with that entirely. But doesn't this suggest that interest rates are going to have to go up sooner rather than later? Uh, certainly a lot sooner than the Fed um, has said that they will keep it um, at current rates until, I think, the middle of 2013. I mean, isn't the story for next year going to be perhaps interest rates start going up? Well. Yes, let me, let me answer to your question, but before, let me say that I do agree that interest rates, the basic interest rates, the, the, uh, must be lower enough to finance banks with liquidity pro uh, problems in the short run. That's the traditional bait shot uh, uh, policy to, to preserve the banking system for, from collapsing. That's totally correct. But as we have been talking before, I think that the Fed is going farther much farther than that. So at some point, and I th think it should be sooner rather than later, the, the Fed must correct uh, its monetary policy in the terms you, you suggested in your, in your question. They must set clearly uh, a primary mandate in terms of price stability. So first, they should um, correct the mistakes of the dual mandate, the so-called dual mandate problem they have in the Constitution of the, um, in the Act of the Federal Reserve. And once this mandate is clear, which must have the approval of the, of the government, they must keep uh, you know, very rigorously uh, to maintain the protection power of money. At the same time, this is very hard to do, but at the same time, the government must um, achieve uh, a, you know, a very rigorous program to cut spending. Because you cannot contract monetary supply, not contract monetary supply, but you cannot stop printing so much money without the government from doing the same with public spending. So this is a very tough job, but I think that next year they should do, they start to do that. Well, whether we, they do or not, we wait with bated breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, well, I, I couldn't guess. But, I, I, I don't know if they are going to do that. I, well, we, we, don't, we don't know at this no. stage. Um, I must admit, I'm, a, I'm quite pessimistic about yeah. their ability to escape um, because of the, the, chains of it, the chains of inflation, really. Yeah. Um, because once you start relying on, on fiat money, extra fiat money, to keep mm. the system going, whether it's the banks or whether it's the government, or, I don't think is that material. It just seems to me that um, history shows that once the government really starts surviving by printing money, it's very difficult for them to get away from that. 